I thought it was time I updated my list on my absolute picks for sub 250 gram RC planes. And um, the one that I have up here now is the Bellantech Sport Cub 500. It is still available for purchase today. I was surprised. It's pretty low cost. And they actually have a, uh, a bind and fly version of it now, not just a plug and fly, but they also have a bind and fly version of it. I'll have links to all of these planes in the show notes from all the vendors where I could find them, where they had, you know, where they were available. But um, I also have links to all the playlists for all these planes too. So if you want to see how they fly, if you want to see what modifications I've done to them, um, aircraft setups, etc., etc., they'll be in there. But this one is the Volantech Sport Cub 500. It is the only one in my list that has a brushed motor rather than a brushless motor. I have really cut this list down. <clears throat> There's not a lot of planes on here, but every one of these planes are just a joy to fly. Um, they're fantastic flying planes. There are planes that I would buy again. So this Sport Cub 500, even though it has a brushed motor and gearbox, it's, it's extremely lightweight. It runs off of a one-cell LiPo. It, it's a four-channel. It has a six-axis gyro. It's OpenTX compatible. So um, it uses the V761 protocol. So if you have a multi-protocol transmitter with a four-in-one module, you're going to be able to bind up to this plane. Um, it is extremely durable. It's a blast to fly. Um, and it is, it's one that is still one of my favorite beginner planes. If you've never flown a plane before, I still highly recommend this plane to start out with. Okay, so the next one up on the list. This is the Isheen slash Adam RC Flying Fish. Now, I could not find any of the Isheens Ver branded versions of this available anymore which is what I have but there the Adam RC branded version of it is still available and this this plane I think for the price is just it, I think it's an absolute steal guys it's 650 millimeter wingspan it's a four channel plane it's got twin 1105 4000 kV motors I think if I remember correctly I think that is spinning a three blade 3016 or 3018 prop. I, I think it's a 3016, but you'll have to look at the specs to to quote me on that. It flies off of a 3S. It comes as a plug-in fly. So I have a BIME gyro in mine, and I have a WFLY RF201S receiver in it. I did add some weight to mine. I put a tripod landing gear on it because of where I land. And it was still, and, and I use an 850 to a 950 milliamp hour 3S LiPo in it. It has unlimited vertical. It's got tons of power, very aerobatic, very durable. And mine, even with the landing gear, it is still sub 250 gram. This is without a doubt one of the best flying factory planes, sub 250 gram factory planes I've ever flown. And it is just an absolute blast. It has a very wide flight envelope. I mean, it is just, you can see there with the landing gear on it. It is just a tremendous plane. I hope they, I hope this one is available for purchase for a very long time. But this is one of them that a couple places it had pretty low stock count on it. And one, one area, one, one vendor I checked it, they only had two of them available. So. I hope that everybody takes advantage of this one. You know, this is one of those factory planes that you, you don't see many like this, especially sub 250 gram. You just don't see many that have this kind of performance, guys. And stability, you know, everything. It's just, it's a fantastic plane. I, I can't recommend it enough. And, and I just, I think it's fantastic. I just absolutely, it's a joy to fly. I love I love flying it every time I take it out. All right, the next one up is the XKA280 P51D Mustang. It is the it was the 
first, I think it's still the first, the first and only sub 250 gram brushless warbird I have flown. It's a, another fantastic flying sub 250 gram plane. This one runs off of a 2S LiPo. It's a four channel plane. It has a 3D 6G um, gyro system in it, so you don't get a full manual mode with it. And I think it, I think the gyro is a little bit more than just wind mitigation. It feels like it feels like maybe the uh, to me it feels like the uh, gyro is stabilizing a bit in 3D mode. But um, but you're unrestricted in what you can do with it. You know that's the great thing about the 3D mode on this one. And as far as XK planes go, this is the first plane from XK that I have flown where I think they got their 3D mode right. I mean, it's just, it's really a blast to fly in 3D mode. If you take a look at the playlist for this, you'll see the only thing that I had to do to this plane was I changed the prop on it. And, and it is much higher performance with the prop that I put on it. So take a look at the, um, the modification that I made to it. I, I modified the spinner to fit the new prop, but that's the only thing that I had to do to it, guys. I think it performs extremely well with the prop that I with a prop that I put on it. It's a good flying plane with the with the stock four blade prop on it. But um, when you're ready for a, for for higher performance from it, you know, take take a look at the the prop in the uh, in the playlist. Look at the playlist for this plane to look at the prop. There are li links to those props in the show notes. So definitely check that out if you want to pull the trigger on this. But um, fantastic plane. It runs off of a 2S. It comes as a uh, ready to fly, but it's also OpenTX compatible. So you can bind a multi-protocol transmitter up to it. The next one up on the list is the Flybear FX9706 SBOC342. This plane flies much like the like the XK A280 P51D Mustang. It's it's brushless. It has a, let me see here, it's a four channel. It also has the 3D 6G gyro system in it, but it has a 2205 motor. Now the P51D Mustang has an 1806 2000 KV motor. This one has a 2205. I do not know what the KV of that motor is. I could not find any information. You know, there was no like KV stamp on the side of the motor. So I don't know what that is, but it comes as a, it says a uh, bind and fly or ready to fly, but the bind and fly version is really a plug and fly version because you need to add an external S bus or PPM receiver to it. That makes it OpenTX compatible. And um, uh, this one, I am not gonna have to change a single thing on this plane. The, the motor is torquey enough. They chose a very good prop for this plane. It has unlimited vertical. Yeah, I think it's the, um, it might be the first, you know, little sport plane like this, uh, sub 250 gram sport plane like this that I flown that had that much power stock. But uh, on this one, I'm not gonna have to change a thing on it. And it is just an absolute blast to fly. Very aerobatic, very stable, tons of power, good flight time. It's another one, and, and a wide flight envelope. So it's another one of those planes that's just definitely a keeper. You know, I, I absolutely have a blast flying it. All right, so let's look at the next one. The next one is the Arrows Pioneer. Now, from what I understand from different posts with people who have purchased this plane after I purchased mine, the latest version is not OpenTX compatible. Now, with the one that I have, before they changed the receiver, uh, on the on the um, gyro board on this plane, I was able to bind up to mine with my OpenTX transmitter, but I understand that's not the case anymore. It's a 620 millimeter wingspan, four channel, has a gyro, um, has a two position gyro. So one is a fully stabilized mode and the other one is like a wind mitigation mode. It's a fantastic flying, I, I think, beginner bush plane. Even if you're intermediate or advanced skill, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a ton of fun with this little bush plane. Very lightweight, very durable. I love the big balloon tires that they have on it. 
It is another one that's brushless, has a 1608-3000 KV motor, uses a 2S LiPo. Now, I will say, even though you can't bind up to this anymore, and as far as I know, it only comes as a ready-to-fly. Although you can't bind up to this with an OpenTX transmitter anymore, this has one of the best ready-to-fly transmitters that I have seen. And um, I, I, uh, I took it out and flew it quite a few times with the stock transmitter. I didn't have any problems flying it with the stock transmitter. The stock transmitter is high quality. I would say that it's like an entry-level hobby-grade transmitter. The sticks have a lot of resolution. The sticks are very smooth. You're not going to have any problems flying this plane with the stock transmitter, guys. None at all. Next one up is the Radio Link A560 3D plane. Now, depending on how you want to balance this plane, you can fly it as a 3D plane, you can fly it as a sport plane. It's got big control surfaces, it's a very aerobatic, it will fly very, very slowly. It is very graceful in the air because it has a ton of power. It is a 560 millimeter wingspan. It has a four channel. Its four channel has a gyro. It has a BIME A gyro in it, which is one of my favorite gyros. So that this one has sta fully stabilized mode. It has vertical mode. It has acrobat mode. It has wind mitigation mode and it has full manual mode. So it's like a five or six mode gyro system that they have on it. Absolutely fantastic. It has a 2206. 1500 kV motor. It comes as a plug and fly or a ready to fly. And this is another one where the ready to fly comes with a hobby entry level hobby grade transmitter. So you're not going to have any problems flying it if you buy the ready to fly version. However, you can buy into it with OpenTX multi protocol transmitter using the protocol Radio Link and sub protocol Air. This runs off of a 2S. It has so much power, it will accelerate vertically, and you can get 9 to 10 minute flights out of it. I absolutely love that plane. All right, so next up on the list. This is my latest one that I have tested out. This is the Radiolink SU-27 Park Jet. It's a 400 millimeter wingspan. It's a three channel or four channel because the gyro system they have in it not only supports Elevon mixing, which is what this uh, park jet has, but it also supports um, rudders. So if you wanted to put rudders on it, you could do that. The gyro that it uses is, is the new Radiolink BIME DB, which is specifically for Elevon mixing, but also uh, optional rudder. So I'm going to be testing that gyro out in a park jet with the rudder on it. It has a 1306 4,000 kV motor, and you can run it off of a 2S or a 3S system. Now, this ha it comes as a ready fly or as a plug-in fly, either one. And the, uh, the uh, same thing with the A560. The transmitter that comes with it is an entry-level um, hobby-grade transmitter. You're not going to have any problems flying this park jet with a stock transmitter. Almost all of my 2S flights that I performed on this, I performed with the stock transmitter. All right, um, I love it on a 2S. It's, uh, it's very maneuverable, even in fully stabilized mode. You can make some tight radius turns with it, which means you can, you can fly it in a small area. It has a very, very wide flight envelope. It has very good power on 2S, but on a 3S, it is a cloud buster. So going forward, I'm going to be flying it mostly with the 3S LiPo. But it, ha it, will, it has unlimited vertical, and it will accelerate vertically on a 3S LiPo. And this is another plane where you get a tremendous amount of flight time with it, too. Radio Link is very good at picking out their power systems for their planes. So both of their planes, both of their planes made my list. I mean, they're just absolutely fantastic planes. This is the only micro factory park jet that I have flown so far that could compete with my DIY park jets. It's the only one that can do that. The only park jet that I've seen so far that can compete with my DIY park jets. It's, it's a joy to fly, guys. It's, it is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for them to come out with their next plane. All right, so that is my entire list that I have. I think that was only what? 
One, two, three, four, five. That's only seven planes, guys. There's only seven planes on my list that are sub 250 grams that I would buy again. And that's the seven that I would buy again. So I hope that helps you guys out. You know that if you purchase any one of these planes, you're going to be you're going to be extremely happy with it. I'll guarantee it. But anyway, um, stay tuned. You'll be able to see more flights on these. Um, this I think that this video will be posted after I've posted my first 3S flight with this little park. So you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with the performance on this on the 3S. It's a, it's an absolute blast. But anyway, um, that's my list. In another year or so, I'll update it again. Um, when, when I have a, a, at least a couple, two or three different aircraft that I need to add to this list. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Tinker's Lab.